Today we're going to be talking about how to find the points along the polar curve where the graph of its tangent line is either vertical or horizontal. And in this particular problem, we've been given the polar curve r equals 3 cosine theta, and it asks to find this curve's vertical and horizontal tangent lines. So the first thing we need to do is realize that the graph will have vertical tangent lines where the derivative is undefined, and horizontal tangent lines where the derivative is equal to zero. In either case, we're interested in the derivative of this curve, so we need to go ahead and find that. The way that we're going to do it is first by converting this curve from a polar curve to a Cartesian curve. As a reminder, we have our conversion equations here for x and y, and all we're going to do is take our value for r, so we have r here defined as 3 cosine theta, and we're going to plug that value for r into r here in our formulas to get a formula for x and y in terms of theta. So when we do that, you'll notice our formula for x will be x equals, we'll plug in 3 cosine theta for r, and we'll get 3 cosine theta times cosine theta here in our formula already, times cosine theta. And for y, we'll get y equals, again, plugging in r, so 3 cosine theta times sine of theta, which was already part of our original formula for y. We can simplify our formula here for x and get 3 cosine squared theta, but either way, now we have equations for x and y. Now to take the derivative in terms of Cartesian coordinates, we have dy over dx, and all we're going to do to find the derivative here is divide our equation for y in terms of theta by our equation for x in terms of theta. So in our case, dy over dx will be equal to dy over d theta, which is going to be the derivative with respect to theta of our equation for y in terms of theta. So 3 cosine theta sine theta. And in our denominator, we're going to be looking at the derivative with respect to theta of our equation for x in terms of theta, which is 3 cosine squared theta. In other words, we need to take the derivative of 3 cosine theta times sine theta, and we need to take the derivative of 3 cosine squared theta. So in order to take the derivative here of our numerator, we're going to need to use product rule where one of our functions is 3 cosine theta, and the other function is sine of theta. So remember that product rule tells us that we're going to take the derivative of one of our functions. So the derivative of 3 cosine theta is negative 3 sine of theta. And then we're going to multiply that by the other function. So we're multiplying that by sine theta, leaving that one alone. Then we'll add to that the opposite situation. We'll leave 3 cosine theta alone, so 3 cosine theta. And we'll multiply by the derivative this time of sine theta. The derivative of sine theta is cosine theta. So there's our derivative. And if we want to, we can go ahead and simplify. We'll pull out a 3. And we'll multiply that by cosine squared of theta here. We want to start with the term that's positive, cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta when we factor out that 3. So that's going to be our new numerator. Our denominator here, the derivative of 3 cosine squared of theta, well, we're going to need to use chain rule. And we're going to multiply 2, the exponent here, by the coefficient 3. We're going to get 6 cosine theta, this is just straight chain rule, we take the derivative of the outside function, leaving the inside function cosine theta alone, but now we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of cosine theta is negative sine theta, so negative sine theta, and now when we simplify this, we see that we get negative 6 sine theta cosine theta. Now if we want to plug these results back into our formula here for dy over dx, what we'll get is in the numerator 3 times cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta divided by our denominator. And in this case, we can go ahead and instead of having the negative 6 out here in front, let's go ahead and make that a negative 3 and pull the 2 inside here. So we just factored out a negative 3. We have negative 3 times 2, which is negative 6, but we separated those. That's going to help us simplify our denominator. So sine theta, cosine theta. Now what we should see is that we have two convenient formulas here up in our reminder section. We know that cosine squared of theta minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine of 
two theta. So what we can do, we'll cancel out the threes and we'll just get negative out here in front. The threes will go away, but we're left with this negative one here. So we'll have negative out in front, and the rest of our numerator will be replaced by cosine of two theta. That's a double angle formula. So cosine of two theta. In our denominator, we know that two times sine theta times cosine theta is equal to sine of two theta, another double angle formula. So sine of two theta in our denominator. And now we have a simplified formula for our derivative dy over dx. At this point, remember we talked about earlier, we said that wherever our derivative is equal to zero is where we have horizontal tangent lines. Wherever our derivative is undefined, we have vertical tangent lines. So what we wanna do is figure out where this function is equal to zero and where it's undefined. Well, it'll be equal to zero when the numerator is equal to zero. It'll be undefined where the denominator is equal to zero. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say we have horizontal tangent lines wherever negative cosine of two theta is equal to zero. We're gonna have vertical tangent lines wherever sine of two theta is equal to zero. So because we have a rational function here, a fraction, it makes it really easy to pull out horizontal and vertical tangent lines. We just set the numerator equal to zero for horizontal tangent lines and the denominator equal to zero for vertical tangent lines. Now we just need to solve each of these. So our negative sign here goes away. We can divide both sides by negative one and we just get cosine of two theta equals zero. Now we know that cosine itself is only equal to zero when theta equals pi over two or three pi over two. We know that by looking at our unit circle, which means that two theta has to be equal to pi over two or two theta has to be equal to three pi over two. Those are the only two points on the unit circle where this could be true. So in order then to solve for theta, in both cases, we'll just divide both sides by two. In this case, we'll get theta equals pi over four. And over here, we'll get theta equals three pi over four. Over here, if we look at vertical tangent lines, we know that sine itself can only be equal to zero when theta is equal to zero or pi. So we have to set two theta equal to zero and two theta equal to pi, and then solve for theta by dividing both equations by two. So we get theta equals zero still, because zero divided by two is just zero. And then over here, we get theta equals pi over two. Now these are the four angles where the function has either a vertical or horizontal tangent line. The angle zero, the angle pi over four, the angle pi over two, and the angle three pi over four. But we need coordinate points. And the way we get coordinate points is by plugging these angles back into our original equation for r. So we're gonna plug each of these angles in for theta to get the corresponding r coordinate. So when we plug in pi over four, we'll get r equals three times cosine of pi over four. If we look at our unit circle, we know that cosine of pi over four is square root of two over two. If we look here just at square root of two over two, we know that the denominator two is actually square root of two times square root of two. So we can cancel the square root of two from the numerator and we'll just be left with square root of two in the denominator. So this point for r simplifies to three over square root of two. So that means the first coordinate point where we have a horizontal tangent line is three over square root of two comma pi over four. That's our first one. Remember that polar coordinates are always written r theta. So we write the coordinate for r first and then the coordinate for theta. If we do the same thing, if we plug three pi over four into r equals three cosine theta, we get r equals three cosine of three pi over four. Cosine of three pi over four is negative square root two over two. When we simplify that, again, the square root of two will cancel from the numerator and we'll just be left with square root of two in the denominator. So we get negative three over square root two. So our coordinate point here then is negative three over square root two comma three pi over four. Those are both of our horizontal tangent lines. Now for our vertical tangent lines, we'll plug zero in. We'll get r equals three cosine of zero. Cosine of zero is just one, so we get r equals three times one, which is just three. 
and therefore we have a point at 3 comma 0. If we plug in pi over 2, we get r equals 3 times cosine of pi over 2. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so we get r equals 3 times 0, which is just 0. And so we have a vertical tangent line at the coordinate point 0 pi over 2. And that's our final answer. These four coordinate points, the first two for a horizontal tangent line, the second two for a vertical tangent line. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.